This bill came before the full appropriations committee. It's clear that the people of Texas didn't send any of us here to slash the budget in the way that Republicans are doing. But you were always welcome in the appropriations process. We were there at 7 in the morning till late at night. To pass House Bill 1 is an irresponsible act. When you think about the children in this state that must be educated. There's not going to be any more money. We're not going to raise taxes. Texas House members worked well past midnight Saturday and plan to come back this afternoon to continue tackling their budget proposals for the state of Texas. Education and Medicaid are taking heavy blows. With a two-thirds supermajority, Republicans have easily prevailed. With House only hours from passing its proposal and the Senate version soon to follow, we're just 57 days away from the end of Session 11. From KXAN Austin News, this is Session 11. Live interactive breakdowns, insights, interviews, and our weekly roundtable discussion. You're watching Session 11 on KXAN Austin News. The individual that signed the bill that caused the structural deficit has been living an excessively lavish lifestyle for the past several years. Jabs at Governor Rick Perry were just part of this weekend's heated debate on the House floor. Democrats say Republicans are letting the governor call the shots this budget season with his warning against dipping into the rainy day fund. Good morning. I'm Robert Hadlock. Thanks for joining us here on Session 11. No new taxes, living with what's available and shifting money around. So far, Republicans have added amendments to move funding from family planning to programs to promote alternatives to abortion, help children with special needs and fund autism research. Many Democrats have refused to vote on some of those items. The battle began on Thursday as members worked to close a gap in the current budget. It took about a billion dollars in extra cuts and $3.2 billion from the rainy day fund. But Republicans say no to taking money from that fund for the 2012-2013 budget. Their budget proposals is $164.5 billion. That's about $23 billion short of what the state needs to maintain even the current services. It's something Democrats say voters will remember in the next election. When they go into the booth to pull a lever, they're going to ask themselves who was with them in prioritizing our children's schools and making college affordable and accessible to all. It's about doing what I think in the long run will provide the greatest benefit to the most people that need it the most. Now, that's my goal. And if I can do that, I'll be satisfied with a two-year term because I can sleep at night. It's not about the future for me, it's about the people that I was sent to represent. This morning we break down the budget and some emerging ideas to help cut costs. Slot machines and casinos are among those with a better chance than ever in this session. Our lawmakers, our newsmakers take up uh, that topic after uh, diving into the cuts to health care. And our On Politics panel will discuss the trouble transportation funding could see after this session. But first, our political reporter, Josh Hinkle, shows you how to interact with us here this morning. Hello, Josh. Hello, Robert. The House will be back in session seven hours uh, later today to finalize its version of the budget. While Republicans are still siding with the governor to protect the rainy day fund for a future emergency use, Democrats are holding out, hoping that will change that something will change to give more money to areas like nursing homes and schools. This morning, our On Politics poll asks, do you think the House will end up dipping into the rainy day fund in the 2012-2013 budget? Log on to KXAN.com and let us know what you think. And while you're there, click on the On Politics tab at the top. It'll go straight to our special political site where you can find our latest coverage and blogs. Plus, click the blue bar at the top to chat with us this morning. We're talking transportation and the state's financial crisis. Our On Politics panel will field your questions later in the program. Robert? Thank you, Josh. It's been a big part of this weekend's back and forth, the Texas health care debate. Looking ahead, by 2014, federal health care reform requires states to have in place what's called an insurance exchange. If they don't, the federal government will. But by creating its own exchange, some Texas lawmakers argue the state can better focus on its residents. It could offer competitive choices of health care insurance carriers. The system would help people better understand which plan is the best and least expensive for them. 
And it's also a way to reform the insurance industry by weeding out the worst and driving down the costs. This morning, our newsmakers are from two different political parties, but both are pushing legislation to create a Texas insurance exchange. State Representative John Zerwas is a Republican from Simonton and one of the only three doctors in the Texas House. He's chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Health and Human Services and also serves on the Public Health Committee. State Representative Garnett Coleman is a Houston Democrat and one of the original authors of the Children's Health Insurance Program here in Texas. He's chairman of the County Affairs Committee and is also the senior ranking member of the Public Health Committee. While it's yet to be seen if congressional and court battles will win out against the president's health care reform, these men told our Josh Hinkle this week a statewide plan is still a good idea no matter that outcome. Now, the stakeholders are all on board with this. You know, you have uh, the, the Texas Association of Health Plans, the Texas Hospital Association, Texas Medical Association. You have small business uh, supporting it, the Texas Association, Association of, of Business, business. and, uh, and uh, Texas Restaurant Association. I mean, anybody that you can almost imagine has said, yeah, it's, we, Texas needs to do an exchange. And, and the reality is, is whether, you know, the health care reform bill continues to exist as, it, as it's portrayed to be or not, there's probably a value for an exchange in the state of Texas to meet small business needs and perhaps even an individual market if the market gets affordable for an individual to buy on. And I like the way Chairman Zarwas put it together as a connector. It connects people with the appropriate plan and price for their needs, just like Travelocity. So I think that, that we're getting used to doing those kinds of things, and it helps people shop for the best product. For, for themselves or in their family. The question might come in is how, how does the health insurance exchange potentially play out in terms of identifying uh, our Medicaid recipients and so forth, you know, and I think the health insurance exchange can help coordinate a great deal of that. Um, there's people that will qualify for Medicaid, there will be people that qualify for the CHIP program, maybe there's those that would qualify for Healthy Texas, you know, a, a not so well known product out there that was passed the last legislative session. And then there's going to be those that uh, if, if, if the health care reform bill stands, there will be a variety of subsidies that would be provided to people. That all needs to be ferreted out somewhere so that people get, um, as the chairman said, connected to the right uh, type of a health plan out there. That meets their needs. If you don't know what your choices are, you might choose the wrong thing and it costs more. When everything is in front of everybody at the same time and it guides you to the right choices, that makes the market more competitive immediately uh, because everybody says, uh-oh, now there's somebody who's telling them the difference between all these plans and they say, oh, this one really works for me and it's less expensive and then the other person has to drop their price. So that's how, how it really works to save money out in the, uh, out in the marketplace. Because it's right, it's yeah. a market-based system. The particular bill that I've brought forth is one that would create a new, what I call quasi-governmental organization, create a new board, and this would function uh, semi-independently with legislative oversight, of course. And uh, Health and Human Resource, uh, Sir, uh, Health and Human Services would be a resource to this group, as would be the Texas Department of Insurance. Um, but it would be a strong public-private partnership, you know, leveraging our our private healthcare industry out there in terms of trying to bring the products to the market that would best meet the needs of individuals out there. But it would be again one of these type of organizations that that run. Uh, somewhat separate from the government itself. It wouldn't be a new agency or anything, but its sole focus would be making sure that the health exchange functions in a way to bring products to the market that meet the needs of, of Texans from a whole variety of different circumstances. How much does something like that cost to set up? Well, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's a, a variable figure. I think my, uh, in my bill, I think that cost a, a few million dollars to get it set up to begin with. Uh, there would be ways of offsetting that. And in fact, the federal government has said they're going to come in and, and, and pay uh, the vast majority of that. I think, that's Chairman, correct. that's about 90% 90 or plus, of, or plus yeah. of that. Really, we, we would probably need to have something, you know, be created during this session or very early thereafter tested in 12 so there would be a group of people that we could perhaps test it on to make sure that it works the way it's envisioned to work and tweak it and things like that um, and then just continue to refine it during 2013 and it got a great hearing in, in the House Committee on Insurance uh, very well supported by all the stakeholders involved and it, and it is sitting pending right now um, 
the governor's office has given us a sense that, that it, it, it probably won't uh, get out of their office. And so that then creates a sense of, okay, how, how far do you push this thing if, there's a, if you're pretty certain that the governor's office isn't in support of it? Right. So, so it has kind of gone to a point where um, the insurance company, uh, the insurance uh, committee is there. They're ready to act on it uh, if, if the circumstances look like you can get some legs and so forth. Uh, but at the end of the day, if it's not going to get through the governor's office, then we have to have, you know, some sense of, well, why should we put members in, in a position to have to take votes on something that, that they know is going to stall out when it gets to the executive office? Well, their debate goes on for almost another hour, and we have the entire conversation streamed on our websites, kxan.com and onpolitics.com. Plus, there's still more to come here on Session 11. I don't want to have to raise out of state. I want to keep our money here and our jobs. The very people who don't have resources to gamble are the very ones who gamble hoping for, to hit the big jackpot. Some lawmakers say there's billions to be made if the state would only give the green light to gambling from slot machines at racetracks to Las Vegas style casinos in Texas. It's all next when our newsmaker debate continues here on Session 11.